dear colleagues, I'm happy to welcome you in the National Assembly of Armenia. We start the second meeting of the EU-Armenia Parliamentary Partnership Committee, and for the opening speech, I give the floor to the Acting President of the National Assembly of the Republic of Armenia, Mr. Hakob Arshakian. Please, Mr. President. Thank you. Mahali Luis, Argeli Hamana Hagahner, Argeli Tikin Despan, Argeli Gorsun Kerner, Tiknakiev Paranak, Vochunum and Zas Yerevanum, Yema Hayastan, Hortarnakan Gorsun Kerutsan, Committee Yegrot Nistians Kasman Kapaksan. Urahem, Gor Isor and Arabutsun and Kanarkelu Hayastani Arabetutsan, Yev Europakan Mutsan Michev, Hamagorsakusan, Nerka Vichaka, Asgain Jovi, Europa, and Hortani, Hoch, Gorzakstan, Vera Belvoch, Inspestaev, Yekustek, Etak Skritsun, Nerkasno, Horakarka, and Al Harser. Uzan Nashel, where Europa can be Utsan at Hort, Gorzan Kirutsan, Zargatsuma, Astani Hamar, Yeredi of Sharnakum, and Lartakin Kaka counts on Tiruti, Karevor Utsun, the Ritzmeka. Karevor Elof, Hortar Nakan, Divanagi to San Dere, Ardi Mijazgain, Arabetsun Nerum, Menk Mustapes. Patras and Gerel, Yerkos Sunsavalel, Medievropatsi Gorson Kerneri Het, Hortarnakan Tarbet Zevacha Perum, Tarata Shajanain, Hantiner Kenarkelu of Drans Lutsumerin, Ajak Seluhamar. I astan a Sharnakume Havatari Menal, Yeropakan Mutsan Het, Artenis Goetsun Nets of Sert, Gorson Kerutsan, Horatsmana, Uvat and Tanur or Akarki Hastatmana, Inchnel Vestahabark and a Pasti Tarata Shajanain, Kainusan of Zargatsmana. Aestani Arapetsun, Europakan Mutsun, Hamaparpa, given the Langvats, Gorson Kirutsan, Amazainagdi, Yerkozak Sanbek, Tavakani, Marti, Mekits, Gorso, Utsan, Mechmutnele, nor Heran the Karner Batsel, Europakan Mutsan, Antam Yerkeneri Het, Amagorzak San, North Ragreria, Kanasneru Hamar. Kuzane Meranke, Zirakta Gitsun, Aitneli, Europakan Mutsan, Gomis. Tramadal Vok, Nashana Kali, Finansakan, Ajax San Hamar, Voru, Uvata in the Lumishark, Uganisha in Nahazar and Sunari Rakanasmana. Ansal Tari Terunets at Artair for Tarnakan and Trutsunari Azat, Artar, Anskatsman, Mevera started Sing Jor Tarakan Arjakin in Miravatar Mutsuna, Pastaisum, Varastanish Hansuner Arashnert and Hamarum, Institutional Bare Pohunari, Sharnaka Kansan Apaoman, Yevjor Tarakan Bare Pohunari and Shotel Sanovutsan. Argeli Gorzan Kerner, Nahor Tarvaira Darsunere, Noria Kanusun and Sterzel, Mertarata Sharjanum, Yevdranis Durs. Yerkozak Santavakani September in Lerna in Garabari, Dem Adrbejani of Turkey, Komit Sansa Zertvats, Karasun Chorsuria Paterazmi, Tanner Hetevankter and Darna Liran Mesamar. I saw Merarchev Kangnat and Avatangus and Marta Raverner. Tarata Sharjani Hautsun of Tangvatse Kayanusun of Pukrun. Aravel Vatangavor Zargatsme. And the Sanum Adrebejanakan, Zinujin Nertapansum, Ayastan in Knishkan Tarask. Hi, Adrebejanakan Saman in Yavichaka Larvat, Yerkozak Sanbek to Vakani, my Sita Serkusits. Ayastani Arabetu Sandem, Votan Zukutsunere, Angesrel and Mark Kain Zoheri, Yevlajor and Vatangel Tarata Sharjana in Avatangutsuna. Ayastana Hastor and Data Partum, Adrebejanik, Kormis Razmakan Gorzo Sunere, Borum Hatarumen, Tarata Sharjana in Havutsuna, Yavatangutsuna. Մեր միջազգային գործընկերների ցանկանում ենք Ադրբեջանի անօրինական գործողությունների անապաղ եւ հասցեական արձագան այդ թվում Հայաստանի ինքնիշխան տարածքն երթափանցման եւ Ադրբեջանի կողմից սահմաններում հրահարվող հետագա սրացումներին մեր խորին համոզմամբ ուժի կիրառումը չի կարող նպաստել վստահության ամրապնման միջոցառումների հաստատմանը ինչպես նաեւ խաղաղության մտնալորտին Այս առումով կուզենայի շնորհակալությունը հայտնել է Եվրոպական խորհրդարանի անդամներին 44 օրյա պատերազմից հետո սկզբունքային դիրքորոշում ցուցաբերելու համար։ Կուզենայի առանձնահատուկ անդրադառնալ հայ ռազմակերիների վերադարձի վերաբերյալ Եվրոպական խորհրդարանի կողմից ծայների ճնշող մեծամասնության պնդումված բանաձևի համար, որով Եվրոպական խորհրդարանը պահանջում է հակամարտության ընթացքում Եվ դրանից հետո ձերբակալված բոլոր հայ գերիների ռազմական եւ քաղաքացիական անձանց անհապաղ եւ անվերապահ ազատ արձակում է։ 2021 թվականի մայիսի 19-ին Եվրոպական խորհրդարանի լիակումար նիստում քվիարկության արդյունքներով հաստատվեց նաեւ Թուրքիայի վերաբերյալ բանաձև զեկույցը, որում Եվրոպական միությունը հաստատում է, վերահաստատում է հայոց ցեղասպանությունը ճանաչելու կոչը։ 
Turkey naev coach Arvind Zersman ar tsan ka sas tesaki haka haka kan kharoshitsuni zevatelu tsan khoskits yevli arje khoren hargil haka kan mashakuite pashpanelu hans darutsuna. Zaykuitsun mikani haradavts Arvind naev lernani garabagi haka martsunum Turkey yu mesats batsa kan derin. Ashvetu zaykuitsunum yevromil tsan kohme vere astatme ayus teraspanusuna chana chelu coacha. Savok sorti teraspanusan che chana chume yev teraspanusan jaktuma berumen. Nord se gastan sus nariye pata gas nari. Argeli gortsun kirner, amos vatsun goriya akam insi xambi hamana xaga utsan hovanu nerko. Garabagian imna xanti xah kar kavurman. Gortsun tatsi versksum yer kozarksan tuvakani novemberi ini ev yer kozarksan mek tuvakani humbari tasna meki yera ko maytar sus nari diarje kira kanat sume. Trans xah tum nari hete vank nari verat sume. Ait tuvu man vera pavren rada tari rejimi pah panume. Այս մի Արաբեթյան ինքնիշխան տարածքից ադրբեջանական զինված ուժերի դուրս բերումը ռազմագերիների եւ քաղաքացիական պատանդների անհապաղ վերադարձը կարող են պայմաններ ստեղծել տարածաշրջանային խաղաղության եւ անվտանգության ամրապնդման համար։ Հայաստանը մեծապես կարևորում է հարևան պետությունների հետ բնականոն հարաբերություններ ունենալը։ Մենք կողմնակից ենք եւ ձգտում ենք տարածաշրջանում բաց սահմաններով եւ գործընկերության վրա խարասխված հարաբերություններ հաստատելուն։ Մշտապես պատրաստ դինելով առողջ եւ իրատեսական երկխոսության։ Կուզենայի ձեզ տեղեկացնել, որ իմ գործընկեր ազգային ժողովի նախագահի տեղակալ Հուբինյանը, որպես Հայաստանի Հարաբերության ներկայացուցիչ Հունվարի 14-ին հանդիպել է Թուրքիայի ներկայացուցիչ Սեդար Քլչի հետ։ Այսօր Վիեննայում տեղի կունենա բանագնացների երկրորդ հանդիպումը։ Դե ավիսենք որ Թուրքիան կվերանայի 93 թվականից ի վեր անկախ Հայաստանի նկատմամբ վարվող փակ սահմանների քաղաքականությունը։ Մենք պարտավոր ենք համագործակցության կամուրջներ ունենալ ինչպես հարևան երկրների այնպես էլ տարբեր ձևաչափերում գործող միջազգային կազմակերպությունների հետ։ Ինը պաստ մեր երկրի զարգացման ու տարածաշրջանային տարածաշրջանում խաղաղության ամրապնդման։ Վստահեմ որ եվրոպական միություն այն կառույցն է, որն իր առաքելությամբ կաջակցի այդ խաղաղության ու կայունության հաստատմանը։ Իսկ մենք խորհրդարանականները սկօգտագործենք խորհրդարանական դիվանագիտության բոլոր լծակները մեր տարածաշրջանում ժողովրդավարական արժեքների հաստատման եւ հարգման ուղությամբ։ Եվս մեկ անգամ ողջունում եմ գործընկերներին Հայաստանում եւ մաղթում արցունավետ աշխատանք շնորհակալություն։ Thank you very much Mr. Ashekan. <coughs> Dear colleagues Highly honored Ms. Kalurand, Ms. Viktorin, dear guests, let me greet you in the National Assembly of the Republic of Armenia. You have visited a country that is a part of European civilization with its centuries old historical and cultural ties. These values, ideological and cultural similarities, greatly contribute to the rapid dynamics of the development of the relations between the European Union and Armenia. Such a development of relations also demonstrates the mutual interest in further deepening of the relations. Parliamentary diplomacy has a significant role in this context. The EU-Armenia Parliamentary Partnership Committee is actively working on a wide range of issues. Close ties have been established between the members of the National Assembly of Armenia and the members of the European Parliament. It's not, um, it's been, 15 years ago that on top of this the Standing Committee on European Integration was created in the National Assembly of Armenia which shows the significant role that the National Assembly gives uh, to the relations with the European Union. After the Velvet Revolution of 2018 major focus has been placed on the key issues of establishment and development of democratic institution and protection of human rights in Armenia, which are a cornerstone of values of Western civilization. The European Union-Armenia Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement that entered into force on March 1, 2021, contributes significantly to the above-mentioned reform processes as marking the beginning of another vital phase of bilateral cooperation between the European Union and Armenia. The agreement is of prominent importance for the modernization of Armenia, in particular by approximation of the legislative framework to EU norms.
Unfortunately, the last two years abounded with challenges, both for humanity in general and for Armenian people in particular. The COVID-19 pandemic was unexpected for all of us, but at the same time showed that only through unified struggle and mutual assistance can humanity overcome disasters. In this regard, the assistance provided by the European Union to Armenia is undeniable. Months after the outbreak of the pandemic, the principle of non-use of force was grossly violated. Nagorno-Karabakh was attacked by Azerbaijan. The devastating war caused thousands of casualties, thousands were displaced, and many captives have not yet returned home 15 months after the war. For years, the Armenian side has spoken about the differentiated approach of international actors, which is a factor influencing regional security and stability. The debates in the European Parliament that adopted resolutions reaffirmed that Europe shares the same convictions together with Armenia. For instance, in 2021, resolution adopted on May 20 stipulates a clear demand for the immediate and unconditional release of all Armenian prisoners of war and civilians captured during or after the war. An addressed call is made to the Azerbaijani government to provide an exhaustive list of all persons held in the captivity, information on their health, including of those who have died in captivity. The resolution clearly states that by intruding in the territory of Armenia on May 12, Azerbaijan, May 12, 2021, Azerbaijan violated international law and the territorial integrity of the Republic of Armenia. In this context, partic particular concern was expressed towards the statements by Azerbaijani representatives, including the president, which appeared to raise territorial claims and threaten the use, threaten by the use of force. The European Parliament views these actions of Azerbaijan as steps aimed at undermining the efforts towards security and stability in the region. This resolution of the European Parliament once again proves that it is impossible to resolve the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict by force and to deprive the people of Artsakh of their undeniable right, rights, including the right of self-determination. We, Armenia, believe in a peaceful European future. We believe in our unity. Thank you very much, and it is my honor and pleasure to give the floor to the co-chair of the EU Armenia Parliamentary Partnership Committee, Ms. Marina Kalurant, please. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, and good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting President, for your introductory remarks. Thank you, honorable co-chair, for your remarks. And thank you, Arman, and the Armenian delegation for hosting us here in Armenia. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to enjoy Armenian hospitality. And I'm looking forward to our day together today. Unfortunately, we haven't met for a long time. There have been bureau meetings in 2018, but not full committee meeting. So I hope that with this meeting, we will put our cooperation back on track and we will continue it more seriously. Today is a special day. It's the 24th of February, 2022. These minutes, a stone and flag was raised in Tallinn to honor the Independence Day of Estonia. And I'm really honored and proud to be on this day here with you. It reminds that how proud it is to be an independent, sovereign nation. Today, these moments, Security Council in New York is discussing invasion of Russia to Ukraine. This reminds once again how fragile peace and democracy can be. There is no excuse there are no pretexts for violation of international law, for violation of UN Charter, and for violation of the principles we agreed in 1975 in Helsinki, 
on the OSC, under the framework of the OSC. And on this tragic day, when there are already human losses in Ukraine, when Kiev is being bombed, as also other cities of Ukraine, I'm proud that my country, that EU and West, Western countries stand strong by Ukraine. The way we were supporting you when you fell under the attack by Azerbaijan. I said then and I say today, there is war is never solution. Solution can come only through diplomacy, only through peaceful talks, peaceful negotiations. So today I would like to urge all Eastern partners and also Mr. Acting President, your country, to show your support to Ukraine, to stand strong and united in supporting Ukraine as we stand strong and supporting Armenia after the second war in Nagorno-Karabakh. You can imagine it's very difficult to return back to normal agenda and say that nothing has happened. Because the world, the day where we woke up today is different from yesterday. And unfortunately, it will have impact not only on the region, but it will have impact on Europe as a whole, and it will have international impact. Having said that, I would like to also make a couple of remarks on the agenda as was prepared. And even during these difficult times, we have to continue cooperating on the topics that are important for Armenia, that are important for the EU. And although our delegation maybe is not as big, but we are here united. We come from different fractions of the European Parliament. We might fight in the European Parliament about different topics. It's called democracy. But when we talk about Eastern partnership and when we talk about EU-Armenia relations, we come here as the united delegation of the European Parliament. Uh, as I said, we do indeed come at a time when the relations between EU and Armenia are excellent. One year ago, the SIPA, the Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement was signed, as was also mentioned by the previous speakers. It came into force. And last November, another major milestone has been achieved, which is the Common Aviation Area Agreement. And here again, I'm proud to say as an Estonian that Estonian Parliament was the first one to ratify this agreement. The EU and Armenia are working together on reforms to help your country get forward. And we hope to give a sizable boost to investment in a number of strategically important areas with our economic and investment plan. I'm also happy to see the well-managed elections of last June under difficult circumstances. And I think that our shared commitment to democracy, human rights, and the rule of law needs to remain a central element of our relations. Unfortunately, European Parliament was not able to send observers to the elections due to the COVID crisis, but we fully subscribe to the recommendations of the OSCE ODIR mission, which also gave a very right positive assessment. I think that our common objective is a safe, democratic, and prosperous Armenia. And we wish to make sure that EU supports your country on that road in all your endeavors. But we should also be frank and talk about concerns as friends do. We also be, uh, we would like to voice concerns whenever ne necessary, such as with regard to developments that risk to have an adverse effect on some basic principles of democratic government, such as the independence of the judiciary, 
or the freedom of expression or the law criminalizing grave insults, especially to government officials and other public figures is one such example. And I'm happy that we had the chance to discuss all these matters yesterday with Prime Minister, with Foreign Minister, but also with the members of opposition and civil society. As a member of the Social Democratic fraction of the European Parliament, I met also the opposition representatives, uh, deputies belonging to the ARF political party. It must, be, it must be recognized that the EU was practically absent at the time of the second Nagorno-Karabakh war. Yes, we have limited tools, but I agree that we could have done more. We have huge political and economic weight and a wide array of instruments to help to build peace and assist in tackling the issues that threaten stability. And I'm so happy and proud to see, as a member of the delegation, our face and voice in Armenia, our ambassador, Ms. Victorin Andrea. Thank you so much for your commitment, for being where you have to be, for being open, frank, and for representing us in the best way you ever can. The fact that Europe is now reclaiming a more active role was symbolized by the meeting of the European Council President Charles Michel and the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan in December in Brussels. And personally, I had the privilege of meeting then Armenian Foreign Minister and having an open and frank exchange of views with him. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has not been resolved. I'm not tired of repeating and reiterating it. Whatever Baku says unilaterally, war is never a solution. There is a need for a comprehensive agreement. It has to be negotiated. It has to be negotiated under the auspices of the Minsk co-chairs of the OSCE framework. We will be discussing in more details the conflict uh, just in a while, so let me just say at this point that I, I, I have always tried to be objective and assess the developments from that standpoint. So I'm still recovering for a minister. Sometimes it does require to appeal to both sides, but sometimes it requires to appeal to one side and speak in a clear language and clear understanding. That is why in statements that I have issued as the chair of the South Caucasus delegation, together with my colleagues, standing rapporteurs, Mr. Kovachev and Ms. Zovko, we have named quite clearly, in particular, certain actions of Azerbaijan over the last year that were considered as harmful, from the inclusion into Armenian territory to the bargaining with the detain detained Armenian servicemen, prisoners of war, persons detained and arrested. I want to stress, though, that much effort is needed from both sides. This concerns, in particular, the need to show restraint in words and action, to build bridges, create opportunities for contacts between people, fight stereotypes, and recognize the wrongs committed by one's own side. Ultimately, reconciliation must be the long-term goal. Building a more open and interconnected region is the best start. This is why I'm very supportive on the ongoing work on the unblocking of communications, which should be given all the support it may need. Likewise, I strongly encourage the talks on normalization of relations with Turkey. These developments could be a game changer for the region and for Armenia in particular. I've said it before, and I want to say once again, I listened very carefully to the speeches by Armenian delegation at the Euronest. And the approach of pragmatic small steps of rebuilding trust, of rebuilding respect towards each other are much needed in these times. Thank you for the attention, and I look forward to our 
debates on all of these topics. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kalurand. And before proceeding to the work of our committee, I one more time pass the floor to the acting president of the parliament, Mr. Arshakyan, please. <laughs> Gordon Kiroch, Mr. Castnell, was Arite Munetel Arteniskim, Estonazi Gordon Kiroch, Shnor Havorel, Anka Kutsan, Arici Kapak Sambiev, Kuzenai, Naev Arito, Tagotelov, Shnor Havorel, Tikingal Urandin, Ice Kapak Sutsam, Ispes Naev Asel, was Hyastan Mustapes, and the Seke Hautsan, Dirkeritz. Yarke Savali, Tesnele, Barakam, Yerkri, Brazma Barakan Gorts and Kiroch Michev, Escalatsein, Yavichaki, Yev, Yesusam, or Merbolori Gorts of Sunderum, and Mitvats Kalineng, Haus and Hastatman, or Akarkin, Yes Sankan and Gorts and Kirnerin, Lavash Hatankain or Martel, Yev Amenain Hajotsun, Stipatso, my spahin. The Kelzes, Yev Arsunabet, Hortax, Yevashatank Martel Bolor, Shnora Kalsum, Yev, Yevus Mekankam, Zez Vortunum and Hyastanum, Usambos, Lav Jamanak Kanskasnek, Yevajor Tankam and Tanik Neri Het Kakangistan, Shnora Kalam. Continue with the agenda. Yes. And I'm in the chair. Um. I'm in the chair for the adoption of agenda and the approval of the draft minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, thank you. Dear colleagues, let's continue with the agenda. Uh, the next agenda point is the adoption of the draft agenda. Uh, it has been distributed. You've seen that. I do not see anybody reject it. Agreed. Let's move to the next point. Next point on our agenda is the approval of the draft minutes of the first meeting of the EU Armenia PPC held on the 24th of October 2018 in Strasbourg. So uh, these minutes have also been distributed to the delegations. I do not see rejections. Yes, sir, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Well, uh, I have spoken to the previous co-chair with Mr. Ashotam, and he had some uh, clarifications regarding the minutes. I'm sure that's some kind of misunderstanding or something like that. If you wish, we can go one by one, or I can present it to the secretariat. Uh, it's regarding, I, I, I do think that it's regarding misunderstanding of the secretariat. I can go one by one, it's only three points. Uh, three points, you said, because yeah. if you have many of them, it's we, only can, three we points. can ask Secretariat to look into that. If you have only three, at least we can try to look into them together. If it's a long uh, job, then we ask Secretariat to do it. But yes, please. Okay, thank you. Well, the first one is regarding the first intervention, intervention of Mr. Ashotzan, and it's written up there that he has said that the in the snap elections, the, it will be a pro, quiet pro-European parla parliament. Mr. Ashutzen hasn't said something like that. Second part is regarding the sixth point. Uh, l l let's stay with this point. So it's the, uh, it's the last sentence yep. on the page yep. one. Yep. Yep. So what is the problem with the last sentence? He just the haven't page? said something like that. He haven't said that. You want to delete this sentence? If possible. Well, I'm looking at the Armenian side. It was just, honestly, just it a was second left my ready. time. I wasn't even in the European Parliament then. So people who were present at that meeting, can you clarify it? Uh, no one was present because no one was <laughs> no present. One, but but let, let so just, we have to yeah. take Mr. Ashotzian's words. <laughs> okay. just, just a second. <laughs> Moreover, so Mr. Mr. Mamijanya, so you are talking about the sentence. Moreover, the new parliament following yep. the SNAP elections will be quite pro-European. 
and thus the EU's role should be reinforced. So you want this sentence to be uh, deleted well, because I, it, this was not said according to... I don't have anything to... against this sentence, but it, it wasn't said. <laughs> Um, well, it, it wasn't said. Can you take the seat, Miss Can you take the seat and turn on your mic? I'm going to ask you something. Just take this. No, here. Just can use take, mic. take the seat and turn on the mic. I want to ask you something. Yes, yes. You were the sec in the secretary, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's delete this. We sentence just we and just move to point two. Yes. This okay. Thank you. Uh, second one is regarding the sixth point. Uh -huh. Well, something I have to ask. Um, it's a joint part regarding the words of Mr. Ashotian and Mr. Tatul Markarian. And uh -huh. there are well, the words of Mr. Markarian and Mr. Ashotian are in the same paragraph. So what I'm asking for, at that time, we already were in opposition. Mr. Markarian was the ambassador. Uh, if it's possible, I would like to divide the paragraph to the words of Mr. Ashotian and the words of Mr. Markarian, because there are some uh, points that are not common for their uh, beliefs. We were at the uh, position at the time. Okay, and how do you see it? First sentence to one, second to second, third to first, fourth to second. How do we divide them? <coughs> we don't it, have the present here. We are not in a position to, to say who said what. So well, how can we do the that? Problem. <laughs> well, that's the problem. I don't have the writing as well, but it would be great to divide their words. It's just the suggestion. We can not adopt it and move forward, but it would be great to have it like that. Okay, so, would you, so we would like to... Divide the words of Mr. Ashotan and Mr. Markarian. Uh, okay, but maybe in that case we can ask uh, Mr. Ashotan just look at this text, not to invite him here, not to waste time on that. But will look have at it. that and say what he likes to want to keep as his sentences. He will have it in written, Ms. Kalurand. Hmm? Can we okay. do that? And okay, the, we'll the, do that. Thank you. And the last one, uh, it's in the seventh point in Mr. Ashutian's speech regarding the electoral code. It says that we said that we greet the change of electoral code. But Can you please not, specify the line? I'm just trying to find the sentence. is, the second sentence is, accordingly, the executive drafted a new electoral code. Everything is okay, I'm for sorry. Its speedy ratification. I'm terribly sorry, everything is okay. In this part, everything is okay. I withdraw my suggestion because everything Okay, so we have the... the uh, we have adopted one, the second one you will have in writing as soon as possible. Excellent. Do we have to adopt it by the end of this meeting? Or we can do it online, we can do it any other form, yeah? Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ms. Kuchir. So, agenda point three covered. Agreement not received. But, but we will work on that and uh, approve it uh, at a later stage. So, with that, I pass the floor back to my co-chair. So I want to, I would like to clarify once again. So we do not uh, agree on this text uh, with the reservation that the paragraph that Mr. Mamijanya was talking about should be rephrased to, uh, 
two speeches should be divided, and only then. So can we can we do it? Can Secretary tell me can we do it in uh, online format afterwards? No, no, but just I wanted to make it clear for myself because I was not sure that everybody had the consent. For that thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Um, uh, now we pass to the second to the next point of our agenda and I pass the floor to the uh, Deputy uh, Foreign Minister of the Republic of Armenia, Paul Hovanisian, please. Thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, dear colleagues, distinguished participants. It is my pleasure to welcome you all in Yerevan and indeed in this uh, format, live format, despite the ongoing global health challenges, it is uh, especially present. And the congratulations to Ms. Galuran for the Estonian's National Day, of course. Uh, undoubtedly, there is a lot to reflect on, and this meeting gives an excellent opportunity for the in-depth discussion uh, on the developments of the uh, past year, recent time, to exchange views on prospects of enhancing cooperation. Um, it is not an easy task to give a state of play of your mini relations. Last year was extremely intensive, and, um, uh, and I'm talking about basically all areas of uh, cooperation. Uh, I will start with reforms. The Armenian government has committed itself to the implementation of comprehensive reforms to strengthen democratic institutions and the rule of law. And it's widely known and it still remains the fact the European Union is Armenia's primary partner in promoting the institution building and supporting our reform agenda. Our decades-long successful cooperation with the EU was uh, reinforced by the signing of the landmark document, the Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement, which fully entered into force on uh, 1st of March uh, uh, last year and encompasses a wide range of areas of cooperation. We aim at expanding and strengthening our partnership as uh, envisioned by the provisions of the SEPA, thus despite of serious challenging challenges and hardships we have been facing for the last two years, we managed to maintain a positive dynamic. Uh, first of all, of the Armenian-EU high-level political dialogue, and we have the evidence last year, the visit of the President of the European Council, who, as you mentioned, heavily engaged in uh, trying to um, mediate uh, in the context of the conflict and establishing of the better environment, the visit of Commissioner for Enlargement and the neighborhood issues, the European Union Special Representative for South Caucasus is regularly here uh, trying to assist in many issues, including the very sensitive issues of prisoners of uh, wars and other detainees and uh, so on. The, from our side as well, the visits are frequent. The Prime Minister participated in the Eastern Partnership Summit. Our Foreign Minister paid the visit to Brussels and had a um, quite productive meeting also with you, Ms. Galuran. Uh, so the uh, political dialogue is an uh, unprecedented, I would say, high, high level. Um, same goes to enhance the legal framework uh, between EU and Armenia. Um, by signing specific agreements, uh, I would name Common Aviation Area Agreement, a Strategic Cooperation Agreement with Europol, the Agreement on Armenia's Association to the Horizon Europe, the Framework Program for Research and Innovation, we just ratified that uh, recently, a week or so ago. Uh, we have also welcomed the Recovery, Resilience and Reform Post-2020 Eastern Partnership Priorities, Joint Staff Working Document and told heartedly endorsed the ambitious economic and investment plan and its flagship initiatives, which are set to strengthen resilience and generate concrete benefits to our people. The priority project span from supporting a sustainable, innovative and competitive economy, boosting connectivity and socioeconomic development, investing in digital transformation, innovation, science and technology, investing in energy efficiency, building resilience in the southern region especially. The successful implementation of those flagships will undoubtedly contribute to Armenia's further development and will support the most uh, critical segments of our economy. Um, 
Dear colleagues, uh, last two years have been especially difficult for Armenia, as you are uh, well aware, in addition to the multi-layer consequences and pandemic, uh, still uh, Armenia is facing the humanitarian consequences of the large-scale aggression against the people of Artsakh and Armenia. And I take this opportunity to commend the integrity and principle stance of the members of the European Parliament, while on the various occasions uh, expressed their clear and unequivocal position on the recent Nagorno-Karabakh war, the violations of Armenian uh, sovereign territory, more particularly strongly called for the release of Armenian prisoners of war and civilians detained. Uh, uh, still, um, uh, the urgency of protection of the Armenian religious and cultural heritage is another issue of uh, high importance and we would expect um, uh, to be more vocal on the, on the topic. Uh, we try to organize a fact-finding mission of UNESCO to the uh, conflict zone and unfortunately the issue been kept delaying. During the last meeting uh, organized by the President of France, this issue has been raised um, and the uh, mission of UNESCO um, uh, to back on Yerevan was mentioned, but what is needed currently is mission to the conflict zone. Of course, the visit to capitals and discussion in Paris would be a first step, but uh, proper um, fact-finding mission uh, to the conflict uh, areas would be required. That's what might help to preserve the uh, unique uh, monument from being uh, destroyed. The tragedy of the 2020 aggression left the population of Artsakh um, uh, isolated, mostly deprived of basic rights, including in many cases free access to education, health care, water, sanitation, as well as freedom of movement. The international partners, uh, EU, UN, UNESCO included, which possess a capacity to um, alleviate the consequences of this dire situation, are banned from access to to Nagorno-Karabakh, to Artsakh. Uh, time and again we state that the people of Artsakh deserve to live in their ancestral land without any fear and deprivation. Their needs, as well as humanitarian consequences, have to be addressed in a proper manner. And this is for this, it is an urgency to provide access for the international players to Nagorno-Karabakh in order to properly assess and address the needs of the peaceful population of Artsakh and to mitigate the humanitarian consequences. Uh, dear colleagues, indeed it is difficult to cover um, the state of play um, for a such short um, time, but um, indeed we could say that the dynamic is there. It is um, obvious and uh, I would be happy if there are additional questions to answer. Thank you again and uh, I wish you a productive uh, continuation of your visit. Mr. Rovanisian, uh, the members of the committee can uh, ask you questions if there are any. Are there, colleagues, are there any questions addressed to the Deputy Foreign Minister, Mr. Rovanisian? Please, Ms. Kalovan. Uh, Minister, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I wanted to ask the question from the Deputy Prime Minister, but I know that you're aware anyway. So uh, I would like to ask about the Trilateral Working Group, which is working on the unblocking uh, of regional communications. And how do you see how EU can directly support this process? Is there a role for EU in this process? Thank you. Uh, thank you, indeed. Uh, I see a certain role uh, for the European Union. Uh, currently, our position has been voiced uh, Armenia being a country which was blockaded for all these years. It was not Azerbaijan or Nakhichivan region. Uh, so basically, of course, we are in favor of opening communications that goes uh, for the railroads, but also for the motor roads. Armenia is uh, ready to open the um, and start uh, concrete steps in that direction. But of course, with one condition, it is not even condition, it's logical to preserve Armenian sovereignty and jurisdiction over all these processes. So custom control and all uh, other rules should be respected. Uh, Azerbaijan seen it as a precondition. We seen it as a very logical uh, state uh, of uh, tackling the issue. 
uh, we presented concrete proposals, um, the whole package of it, uh, how to proceed and to show that indeed it's not on the level of declaration, but uh, it's the preparedness for the concrete actions. I think um, uh, more vocal stance from the European Union in support of the process uh, with this understanding to preserve sovereignty of sites might be helpful on this stage. Otherwise, on technical level, I think uh, the uh, um, uh, works with the mediation of Russian Federation proceeding in more pragmatic way. Uh, I don't uh, think there are any other specific elements uh, which, which might be an obstacle here. Thanks. Any comments, remarks? Thank you. Um, if there are no more questions to the Deputy uh, Foreign Minister, then I, uh, with pleasure, pass the floor to the Head of the Delegation of the EU to Armenia, Her Excellency Ambassador Andrea Viktorin, please. Thank you so much, um, and thank you for your hospitality. I think it is really, well, in a very difficult time today. I join uh, the comments of uh, Ms. Gallorand, and if you look at the reactions of the European Union uh, to the attack on Ukraine, you will find the same wording from the President of the Parliament, from the President of the Commission, from the President of the European Council, and the High Representative, just this as a small comment. Um, for EU-Armenia relations, it's very important to have this meeting now, um, ahead of the uh, uh, anniversary of the entry into force uh, of SEPA on the 1st of March, so next week. Um, and it is the beginning of a series of consultations on different levels, and I'm very happy that you start with the Parliament, because you are the ones who are observing the process, and it is very important that we have this exchange of views here. The European Union uh, stands by Armenia. I think this is quite clear. Um, we, uh, when we, when we um, started to work on SEPA, we, as European Union, highly appreciated that SEPA was taken as a blueprint for reforms in Armenia. And this was our common roadmap, how to develop the relations. Um, and this remains our common objective. Um, so, uh, the European Union uh, was able, normally you say we are not, but I think we were able to adjust to the difficult situation due to the pandemic and also after the war. Um, the European Union redirected assistance uh, to really help um, a midterm economic recovery plan uh, to support Armenia uh, in the um, fight against the pandemic. And uh, the European Union was the first donor who really came and gave humanitarian assistance um, af after the war to vulnerable groups both in Armenia, but also in Nagorno-Karabakh, via the organization that is able to work there, which is the ECRC. So I think we, we showed our commitment, and last year with the three high-ranking visits of the three foreign ministers who came with the mandate uh, of uh, High Representative Borrell, with the vis visit of Commissioner Vahi, and then the visit of uh, President uh, Michel, we underlined our commitment and we continue to do so. So on a political level, there is a willingness, and I think this was clearly documented, of the European Union to be more engaged, um, to help to facilitate uh, negotiations, because I can only agree to Marina, war is never a solution. And uh, it was acknowledged uh, by our leaders that uh, the conflict is not over, that we want to facilitate first pragmatic steps, and we underline the role of the OSCE Minsk Group and the co-chairs. Um, if you see today, I can tell you today there are three events going on which show a clear um, or shed a light on what we are doing as European Union. First of all, tonight arrived 
a new batch of vaccines, uh, Moderna, uh, offered by uh, Greece and facilitated by the European Union. So this arrived tonight. Um, secondly, uh, while we are speaking, a mission um, from uh, colleagues from the delegation together with the European Investment Bank and COAF, together with the Ministry of Education, are heading south um, to see uh, the possibility of uh, uh, support for um, smart co-op centers in Sisian and Kapan. Uh, and there will be a meeting of the working group between uh, the EU, the EIB, the Armenian government, and uh, COAF. So I think it is a very strong sign that we want to support SUNIC because this is a region uh, which has a very difficult situation right now, and this is also important for the independence of your country. Thirdly, we have an evaluation committee today in the, in the EU delegation um, discussing uh, the next twinning project we are having, which will be on anti-corruption with the Corruption Prevention Committee to show you that we are engaged in all areas, and we continue to do so, which is supporting the reform process, helping Armenia to get uh, economic recovery, and I underline it once again, this needs to be green, and this needs to be social. That's my wording whenever I discuss it with the government. To support civil society, to be in a clear dialogue um, with all the stakeholders about the progress we made. Um, and uh, we are working closely together on the flagships, which are uh, an opportunity and which show that we are developing our cooperation based on the experience of the last seven years with a projection of um, of the priorities we set for the next seven years. And this is, in a nutshell, um, to support uh, uh, economy, especially via small and medium-sized companies. We will go do more in the field of education. We already tried um, really to cooperate with the Ministry of Education over the last two years. And I think this will be one of the of the uh, new elements in our cooperation because we are deeply convinced that you have to support young people to give them opportunities, to give them jobs, um, and to, by this also to uh, improve the resilience of the country. We are closely cooperating in the field of uh, 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 democratic reforms, but uh, as uh, Marina said, naturally, in an open discussion, we also look where we can even increase our cooperation on topics like gender equality, um, support for uh, vulnerable groups, whether they are uh, rights of children, rights of women, rights of disabled persons. Uh, so we have a whole range of uh, cooperation elements. We will have in the next months a series of, uh, of uh, joint meetings to continue our discussion, which is first the partnership committee, then in May the partnership council, and in June we will have the human rights dialogue, and we will also discuss, let's say, uh, the further uh, commitment to improve trade between Armenia and the European Union via the Trade Committee. So, I repeat, the EU stands by Armenia. We are cooperating in all fields, and it is very important that we find a way to, div uh, to, to unite society and not divide it, because only then we will have progress and then we will really uh, make it possible that the development of this country is for the benefit of the people. And this is always the ultimate goal of the European Union. Thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, 
And again, you can ask questions to Her Excellency, Ms. Andrea Victorin, if there are any. If there are no questions to Ms. Victorin, then I suggest to have, uh, before proceeding to the next point, to have a very short coffee break, if uh, you do not mind, and then come back and continue. Thank you. Well, Colleagues, I suggest to continue uh, the meeting, and the next agenda point is the discussion on the recent political developments in Armenia and state of play of domestic reforms. I suggest uh, to do it in a more interactive way, uh, in a Q&A um, question and answer format, and to give the floor to whoever wants to express himself or herself on this topic. Um, please, any, Mr. Khan Danyan, please. Dear co-chairs, Your Excellency, dear colleagues, uh, thank you very much. I want to thank Ms. Galurant and Ms. Gregorova for coming to Armenia and spending these three days in auspices of Euronest and uh, this committee meeting. I also want to join my colleagues congratulating you on Estonia National Day. I would like to speak about the state of democracy in Armenia and to focus mostly on the fight against corruption as one of the most important directions in the democratic changes and achievements in our country. The Economist Intelligence Unit has recently published the Democracy Index 2021 report where Armenia registered an improvement of 0.14 points compared with 2020 to take its total score to uh, 549 in 2021. Armenia ranks 89th in the global ranking and, it is, uh, and our country is the leader in our region. I want to cite uh, from the report, it says, a snap parliamentary election held in June 2021 gave the Prime Minister a strong public mandate following a period of turbulence and discontent. The sweeping victory of Mr. Pashinyan and his civil contract party brought a degree of stability following the 2020 war with Azerbaijan. This allowed the government to continue its democratic reform program. End of citation. Last year's general elections, as the previous elections held in December 2018, were free of the irregularities, unlike the elections that we had in the past. And these elections reaffirmed Armenia's unwavering commitment to democracy and the democratic reforms. It is important to note that the opposition has accepted the results of these elections and has not boycotted the new activities of the parliament. Of course, the political will of the government and the ruling party was very important to achieve such results, but it is also essential to underline that the electoral reform that was adopted before last year's elections has also had a very significant role for the organization of such democratic elections. In 2021, we also had local elections in Armenia, and these elections were held in a democratic way and were well administered. The diversity in results underscored the competitive nature of the elections. This was the first elections after the long-awaited local governance reform, and I believe further improve improvements must be done to achieve better results. I will stop here talking about elections and other democratic reforms and achievements Armenia has reached, and will focus on the anti-corruption policies that Armenia is implementing. Transparency International has recently published the Corruption Perception Index report for 2021, and the report notes, Armenia is a success story of the Corruption Perception Index in the last five years, improving 14 points since 2017 to a score of 49. Mass protests in 2018 forced out an entrenched political elite in favor of a reform-minded government. Armenia has since expanded civil liberties, paving the way for more sustainable civic engagement and accountability Following the 2018 Velvet Revolution, Armenia initially made both significant democratic imp improvements and positive strides against corruption, climbing 15 points on the CPI over the last decade, end of citation. I would like to explain what stands behind these lines and why Armenia is so successful in, corrupt, uh, in fighting corruption, what it means at the institutional and policy-making level. First, I would like to refer to the national security strategy of Armenia adopted in 2020. It clearly identifies that corruption as an, is a national security threat. According to this document, threatening democratic institutions and the rule of law contribute to Armenia's national security. Second, the Armenian government adopted the anti-corruption strategy of Armenia in 2019. 
it, uh, it has three general directions, prevention of corruption, counteraction of corruption, raising public awareness. As a first significant step in direction of prevention of corruption, the Commission Law to Prevent Corruption was created in 2019. This is an independent body, the commissioners of which are elected by the parliament, but the candidates for commissioners undergo a very competitive competition procedure. Quite a wide range of public officials and their relatives submit a detailed annual declaration about their income and property to this committee. Starting from January 2022, the public official, officials will also submit declarations about their annual expenses. Starting from 2022, the political parties will also be obliged to declare their financial sources, property and expenses annually. The Commission to Prevent Corruption also checks the integrity of the candidates of judge, for judges and justices. The CPC has access to state database and financial information. In 2020, the Armenian Parliament adopted a law on confiscation of property of illegal origin, which will help not only recover the stolen assets within Armenia and beyond, but also apply the regulations regarding the cases of money laundering, trafficking, etc. Within the scope of counteraction of corruption, new institutions were created. The Anti-Corruption Committee was established, the head and the investigators of which are selected through competition, who also undergo an integrity check procedure. The Anti-Corruption Court was created, and soon we will have judges specialized in corruption-related cases. A new Anti-Corruption Division in the Prosecutor's Office was created, the prosecutors of which and their candidates, they all undergo integrity check and are selected through competition. As you can see, we embarked on the establishing of a full chain of institutions that examine corruption cases in investigation, from investigation to court rulings. And I am hopeful that with these institutional capacities, we will be able to show much better results in fighting against corruption in upcoming <coughs> years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Handanyan. Uh, Ms. Stambulian, you wanted the floor, right? Thank you. Dear colleagues, today political developments in Armenia are conditioned by several factors. The first of them is security. In fact, today we have a fact of aggression against the sovereign territory of Armenia. The issue of the presence of Azerbaijan armed forces in the territory of the Republic of Armenia has not been solved for so many months. Moreover, this issue is not seen to be touched upon by the authorities. In such conditions, there is no resonant effect from the international partners. Security issues also have their implications along the Frontier. We are talking about various frontier incidents, violations of the rights of frontier residents. In the security component, we can look at the issues related to the current state of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, but we will look at them in more detail in our next thematic discussion. The second major component is the issue of human rights and democracy. The current authorities have already crossed all possible red lines in terms of striking a democracy. It's about harassment on freedom of speech, including bringing them into legal area, the issue of separation of authority, and in particular, the continuous and open pressure on the judiciary. You already have the fact of arrest of a judge and the pressure on the political dissidents. Today in Armenia, we have both political prisoners and many political persecutors. By the way, also we are talking about the deputies representing the opposition. We have quite serious problems after the local self-government elections. Almost all of the opposition candidates who won the local elections are directly or indirectly politically persecuted with various tools. Also, a very important component of political development is the social economic situation, which is in no way optimistic. We have quite high inflation, and the incomes of the citizens don't increase at the same time. As a result, we have a serious rate of emigration, which, by the way, is also related to the security and democratic issues. This is the situation in, our, in Armenia today. In which case, the word reform just sounds very cynical. Considering the gauge of our meeting, the partnership in conclusion, I would like to draw your attention to a very important circumstance. 
There is a lot of talk about this now. There are even public actions related to it. The stillness of Western, first and foremost European structures related to the above mentioned issues is, incomprehens is incomprehensible to our society. There is no explanation of this. And I want it to be heard by you and in a broad sense by European partners. We have seen the rather serious reaction of the same European institutions to situations that accounted for two, three percent of today's problems. Such a course of action was in a sense a straight jacket for any government. Now, we don't see this. We see a selective attitude, the application of double standards. There is no other explanation than the transfer of Armenian-European relationship from the area of values to the area of simple political trade. And here, the second problem arises. Area of values to the area of simple. The practice of European structures, what, pro what promised is the encouraging silence of exchange of our authorities. This question has one very strong side. I think we all understand that we are dealing with a deal. I repeat, there is no other explanation. A deal that comes to life the back of the public. Every government is temporarily. They will leave, but the trace left by silence of European institutions will remain in the public consciousness of long term. Thank you. Mr. Mamijanyan, please. Հաղորդությունը, <speaking> <speaking> Amatangain, him Nahan Tisner, Evarabari, Akamartan Schulz, the Tratira Vijaka, yes, the Ramasin, Hosem Hajor Tielutum. Tultavek, I see a lutum, Hosel Vochme and Hastanum, Jor Tavartan, Makarda Kits, I'll Nav Hastan, Yem Hortanak, Hortanakan, Gorton Gelchan, Comitei, Arkaida Vijakits, Yev Arasrak, and Tatso Gorton Tatsnets. Nahishat Snurakalem, King Kalorandin, King Gorevain. But <laughs> Եվ լինելով EPP մեծ ընտանիքի անդամ կուսակցության ներկայացուցիչ ես այդ հարցը կբարձացնեմ գալիք միջոցառումների ժամանակ EPP որովհետև իմ համար զարմանալի է որ մեր քաղաքական ընտանիքի ներկայացուցիչները այստեղ ներկա չեն պիտի խնդրեմ նաև ձեզ սիրելի գործ ընկերներ այս հարցը բարձրաց այնել որովհետև եթե մենք որոշ էինք որևէ որոշում կայացնել the pet quorum is hard. It can help stack the vats. Because we can only work on bits. Stack caravan cars and agrel work quorum is massive. And can hostel change caravan. Show me the love. Yes, piti Andre Darnam. Chorot rule number four. Chorot getin merka ona karki. Or hosume bureauize va vol mam masin. Ye hosume. Committee for Nacha Gahneri. We are going to choose committee for the camp for Nacha Gahneri and the man mass. We are going to pass the river to our last chairman at Arbel Pacharnero. Here we speak to our Charke, or for Pes Gervats, come to Gervats, the Hayat Sau Champ or Enkan Tuneng, or Gone Hayastanian committee, Yerku for Nacha Gahneri, it's make a quota for Vin Dimutan Hammer. Yes. Uzedai Andra Darnal Naeva in Pastin was first rule number five, Hingerot Keti. Meng Petit recommendation Nesh, 
խորուրդ մեր ընդունեինք, որը նույնպես այս մեր նիստով նախատեսված չի և խնդրում եմ ճիշտ ընկալել ասացներս, ես որով եմ եկ ինչ եմ մեղադրում, ես մեղադրում եմ մեր բոլորի համատեղ աշխատանքը։ Եվ անում եմ դա մի նպատակով ավելի արդյունավետ և ավելի գործնական դարձնելու խորդահանական գործուկերնության կոմիտեի աշխատանքները։ Շառունակելով պահոն խանդանյանի իր խոսկում ներարած կետը, որ ժնդիմությունը չի բոյկոտել պարլամենտի աշխատանքները ձեավորումը և ներարվել է պարլամենտում, կանի որ շատ հաճախ է միջազգային կարոցների զեկույցներում այս կետը հանդիպում, որպես առանձին և երկար կննարկման թեմա է ներկայացված պաստարկները և երկրորդ։ Եվ աս մեկ անգամ այս բարցր ամբյորնից պաստեմ։ Պատիվ ունեմ խմբակցությունը և վստահ եմ, որ նաև Հայաստան խմբակցությունը Ուստի ընդրում եմ կաղաքական գնահատականները տալից ճիշտ ընկալել մեր դիրկորոշումները։ Ես փորձեմ մի փոքր ավելի ընկալելի և ինչու չէ հարազատ մեր եվրոպացի գործ ընկերների համար ներկայացնեմ Հայաստանում արկա իրավիճակը նարվայի կաղաքապետը ընտրվելուց հետո պարզապես կձերպակալվեր։ Պարզապես կձերպակալվեր։ Մի քրեական գործով, որով բոլոր զարգացումները տեղի ունեցան և ակտիվացան բացարապես ընդրարշավի մեկնարկից հետ։ Կաղ կձերպակալվեր ընտրություններից հետո և նարավորություն չեր ունենալու մասնակցեր ավականուն իստին, որտեղ պիտի ինտրվեր կաղաքի եղի կավարը։ Այո, դուք կարող եք դա պատկերացնել, եթե հետ գործերը ունենային, չունենային � որ հավանականություն եք տեսնում, որ առանց պատգանավորների անձերմխելության հաղթահարման ընտրված պատգանավորները գտնվեին ազանազատության մեջ ամիսներ շարունակ։ Ես ուզում եմ, որպեսի դուք պատկերացնեք, այս � որպես կաղական գործ չի հիմնական գործիք։ Այնպես տացվեց, որ Նիկոլ պաշինյանը իր ողջ կարոզարշավը առուցել էր մուրջի շուրջ, որը բաց հարապես աշխատանքի սիմվոլ չեր ծարայում, չեր ծարայում, որպես մեր ժողովրդի � Վերվար թե պատկերացնեք, որ ձեր երկրներում իրենց կայացրած որոշման համար կարող ենք ալանավորվել դատավորներ։ Վերվար թե պատկերացնեք, որ երբև է ձեր երկրներում հանրապետության հրապարակում տեղադրված մեծ եկրանի վրա։ Չ Եթե չեմ սխալվում բարացի եմ ծիտում ճարդել ընդիմության գլուխները։ Կրկնում եմ Հայաստանի Հանրապետության հերապարակում տեղադրված մեծ եկրանից։ Դե դա երևի բավական չեր, այդ նույն տեսաշերը ծուցադրվեց նաև հանրային � ընդիմության կողմից կիրարվող գործիքները, 
ծույցերը, դրանց հիտորիկան, պարլամենտում հիտորիկան, բայց մենք խորապես համոզված ենք, որ մեր կաղաքացիների արդար դժգոհությունը բարցրաձայնելու բոլոր որենքով չարքելված գործիքները ոգտագործելի են և տեղի։ Դրվար մեր հարգելի գործ ընկերները պատկերացնեն, որ լրատվականների նկատմամբ ազգային ժողովի ամբյոնից իշխող կուսակության ներկայացիչը կարող է հնչեցնել որակումներ, որոնք խիստ վիրավորական են։ Ես վստա են, որ նաև ձեր երկրներում է տեղի ունեցել այս կամայն խմբավորումների բայց դժվար պատկերացնեմ, որ ձեր երկրներից որև է մեկում դրանից հետո այդ խմբավորումներից մեկի ղեկավարը կնշանակվի ազգային ժողովի նախագահի հոգնական։ Հայաստանում արկա են դեմոկրատիզացիայի լրջագույն խնդիրն Ես բազմիցս ես խնդիրները հնչեցրել եմ ամենատարբեր միջազգային կարությունների ներկայությունների ներկայություն։ Հաճախ ես ստանում եմ պատասխան, որ հրապարակային դրանց մասին չի խոսվում, բայց աշխատանքային գործ ընթացները հասել են այն պուլին, որ նմանոյնակ կոնսուլտացյանների գործիք հակազմը իրենց պարել է։ Եվ հասարակությունը, համեն այն դեպս հասարակության այն զգալի հատվածը, որը դժգոհ է իշխանության ամբյոնը ես չեմ հնչեցնում շատ ավելի կոշտ որակումն էր, բայց եվ նույն ժամանակ տեր եմ մնում այն բոլոր ասացներիս, որոնդ կասել եմ մինչև պարլամենտ մուտ գործել է և դրանից հետո, ակնկալում են եվրոպական կարող է նույնիս չլինեն ընդհանուր դեմոկրատիզացիայի վերաբերալ, բայց առանձին աղաղակող դրսևորումները անռաժեշտ է կասեցվեն հրապարակային որակումներով։ Շնորակալ եմ։ Շնորակալություն։ Պահան վարդորանի մխնդրան։ Թենք Um, I will try to be as brief as possible and present the situation of uh, human rights, of the setbacks and shortcomings that we have in core democratic values in Armenia. I'm sitting here as a member of the parliament, members of parliament in the European Union and maybe all around the world have certain guarantees, universal guarantees. One of those guarantees is the immunity of members of the parliament. Immunity from prosecution, immunity from harassment, immunity to have the freedom to present his political ideas, decisions, statements, criticism, etc. But the situation in Armenia was the following. On August 2, when the parliament's work started, we had two of our colleagues who enjoyed the same status as the ones who are sitting here from the opposition, from the ruling party, it doesn't matter. The same status. They were in a penitentiary institution. There was no consent from the parliament. There were no safeguards protected. They were in a penitentiary institution. Just on that day, we raised the situation, we raised the issue. We said that this is a violation of the Constitution of Armenia. 
This is a violation of a universal guarantee for members of the parliament. The reaction of the ruling party of the government, nothing. A few days later, a third person from our faction, member of the parliament, was also arrested without the consent of the National Assembly, again in violation with the Constitution. So three of our colleagues for about six months were kept under arrest without the consent of the National Assembly. We immediately raised this issue to the Constitutional Court as a faction. But it took time before the Constitutional Court would make a decision. We raised the issue to the EU ambassador, to every possible body that we could see or send a letter. The reaction was silence, not even one statement. The reaction from the government, inaction. But what happened? In December 6, the Constitutional Court found that our justifications were correct, that our legal analysis was correct. And three of our colleagues, only thanks to the decision of the Constitutional Court, were released from penitentiary institutions. Just imagine we also have more than, well, almost 10 of our colleagues, again, oppositional representatives, who simply cannot participate in international forums, in international meetings, because their, let's say, right to leave the country is limited. The Constitutional Court in that same decision said the obvious, that you can have criminal prosecution against members of the parliament, but you cannot limit their lawful activities as members of the parliament. But again, the situation remains. We even have the one of the, I guess, uh, unprecedented situations in the history of the Council of Europe in general. We have a delegate in the COE Parliamentary Assembly, Mr. Armen Gevorkian, who despite having an immunity as a member of the Parliamentary Assembly, does not have the opportunity to participate in meetings because it's not allowed for him. This is the situation with guarantees for opposition representatives, of members of parliament, of the democratic values that we see in Armenia. Another thing that was also, and I highly put importance to it, was raised by Madame Kalurand as well, is the criminalization of grave insult. Just a few statistics here would be interesting. As of now, there are more than 240 pending cases based on this article of the Criminal Code. I assure you there is not one person who is connected or indirectly connected with the ruling party who said grave insults about the opposition and is being criminally prosecuted. These 240 cases are about the opposition. These 240 cases are about criticism of the government because this is a tool for repression. We also like to stress the situation that we had with, uh, although my colleague said this, with the limited access zone that the parliament became for the representatives of mass media. Literally, it is as if this is a war zone or something. Because whenever you see what happens to journalists who were trying to show what is happening in the parliament, by the way, we also had a brawl in the parliament. Uh, this is the sad part of the last uh, year, I guess. I say this with really deep concern because this was unacceptable for anyone. But the sad thing is that who were very active during the brawl? Representatives of the ruling party. Well, what you might think is that whenever a brawl happens, there have to be consequences, right? But in the Armenian reality, we did not have even one criminal case initiated against the representatives of the ruling party. But is this democratic? You might ask. I hope that you might ask that question. Just a few months ago, we even had a case when the assistance of members of the parliament from the opposition were literally attacked by the members of the parliament from the ruling party. And you might ask again, 
Is there a criminal case initiated against these people? No, there isn't. There is not even one person accused of these actions. The situation regarding the municipal elections was presented briefly, but I just want to stress this situation. Look, for example, Mami Konaslanya, mayor of Vanazor. He was the acting mayor. He was a good mayor in the sense of the government. Nothing was wrong with him. He did not commit any unlawful actions. Just after the elections, when he was re-elected, a criminal case was started, he was arrested. Is this a double standard? Is this at least um, suspicious? It should be, right? And the second thing, it's not as if the Armenian legislation says that you have to arrest anyone who is being criminally prosecuted. You have other measures as well, as in any EU country. For example, you have the Institute of Bail. Why isn't bail used in this kind of politically sensitive cases? Because they try to harass the opposition, the government. That's the sole motive of this. I don't see any other motive. You might ask, for example, does the opposition um, study the situation whether people who are at least acquainted with the ruling party are relatives of uh, representatives of the ruling party who are under arrest? I would say that they are not under arrest. There are cases when they are being criminally prosecuted, but bail is acceptable in those cases, which is the right approach, by the way, regardless it's from the opposition or the government. But why is not bail used, for example, in the case of Arush Arushanyan, Mamikon Aslanyan, Narek Mantashyan, people who are simply from the opposition and are kept under arrest for months? This is not acceptable. This is not something of a practice in the European Union. And when I said about arrests, let me just present some very interesting statistics. So there were 1,405 motions of arrest approved by courts in the year 2021 by October 27. That number was raised by the end of 2021. And by the way, this is the justice reform that we are talking about. That EU gives money for this justice reform, which is very important, by the way. But what is the essence of this reform, dear colleagues? We created in, our, in Armenia a court of arrests. You won't see such kind of court in any other European country, but we have it here. And all arrest motions, like eight, more than 80% of arrest motions are being satisfied. It's as if, let's say, courts are for arresting people. It's not acceptable. And another thing, by the way, I really hope, Madam Kaluran, that you would uh, give importance to this, because this, uh, let's say, mechanism was developed thanks to EU. I'm talking about the mechanism of random assignment of cases to judges. This is a, let's say, IT development that Armenia received thanks to EU. It took place in 2014. So cases are not assigned by the president of the court saying, you know, you are a good judge, you are close to me, you are doing whatever I'm telling you, that's why I'll assign good cases to you. No, this situation was resolved. A computer mechanism was the one who was assigning cases. You know what happened in 2021, July, right after elections? This mechanism was taken away by the investigative committee. In the 21st century, when IT, let's say, uh, technologies are that much developed, up until now, as we speak, we do not have this random mechanism returned to courts. And judges, let's say, are being assigned cases only by presidents of courts. And by the way, there are no coincidences in those assignments. No coincidence. And as we speak, we have something unprecedented in the European level. We have a judge, Boris Bakhshian, who is arrested because of his decision. Not because he took a bribe. Not because he did something, let's say, intervening of justice. But because he adopted a judicial act with which the prosecution did not agree. But at the same time, did not even present an appeal. 
We are talking about justice reforms, and we have a situation when the prosecution does not present an appeal, but presents a motion to arrest the judge, and the judge is being arrested. I'll be very short, and I'm um, wrapping up my speech. Regarding the situation of this judge, we informed, for example, our dear Madam Ambassador. I have even went further. I said that the case is assigned to a judge who was participating in the rallies of the ruling party, even hitting a drum during those rallies, who later on become a became a judge. And I've said that I have full faith and confidence that this judge is going to arrest the other judge, because there is political sensitivity in this case. And I was correct. The judge is arrested as we speak, for the first time. Not for a bribe, because for bribes, all judges have to be, let's say, criminally prosecuted. This is not about bribe. This is something very different and should be unacceptable. But sadly, our colleagues are silent. Thank you. Yes, Volpes, yes, Arza can come. My Lord and Kennedy are such in. Um, Waki Terre cuts them. We will pass up at Swiss. Tange, I have a Bernat and Shumden and Terran Hastanum. They like poem, Volunak, like poem on Abu Berlink, Pom Bartavanian, for Yelutnet, Petka Gedas and Saint Hingdopen. No maximum vets sope, look, Skitam Kanidope Hosetzik, Arans. Im Kormit and Tatvelu, Miban Kalorei, Petch Sankatsa, U Anajes Chamalzi, Volvetev Zer Karzik, Mincha Verge Arta Haitel, Shat Aveli Kalavol Inns, Yev Mer, Pedats, Arjek Neri, Hamar Anna Darnalov, Zer Barsas Tats Harzeni, Yaskuzena, Mikanichis Gurtumaner, Arachina, Zaner, Vira Volanka, Kriakanats Nelu, Masin Oleng. Talas was the second car, the eight norma, eight nor Kerakan Hodvatsa, Verabirme, Mien, Karakakan Gortish Nerin. Yes, Susan Terak Pile, Melkorts and Kenerin, Vod Palam Vartavanyani, the Shats, Yerku Hadur, Kani, Yerku Karasunits, Aveli Gortsits, Mot Utsun Tokosa, Aveli Kan Utsun Tokosa, Masnavur, Anzans, Kormits, Vostikan Utsana, Nelkatsvat, Borok Neri, Masinen. I think that Masnavo Yerku Ans, Voch Karakakan Gortich, Voch Hailein Gortich, Vichelen, make a music miguze high hoyele, comes under Vida Vodele, Yevnans, his make no maker, Vida Vodvats, a Ganatele Vostikan Utsun, Nelkastele Borok, Utsun Tokosa, Eid Gortzeli. As a sick word, Ayo, Manatsak Santo Cosa, Ayo Vela Bedume, Hailein, Gortish Nedin, Karakakan Gortish Nedin. Eid Santo Cosit, Ayo, Metsmasa. Verabedum is Hansander Kalsish name, but Kana even the Mutsander Kalsish name Masin Verabedal Gort, Um Vida Vodelen, Yevdahima Kanan Vume, Orinak, Palon Sharmazanovin, Palm Mamijanian, make Gortska, I'd be see, yes, Chikitam in Chuduk Dutch and the Shetsik, Vida Vodelen, E. Hana in Gort's Nevit Ham Pedumov, Yevite Gortza, Hima, Kanan Vume, Hamapatas Han, Malmin Nedum. I think an Esther Vodeve. Het whatever making, het apandelu kam khatra kanutsun denelu mitum chika. Yes, na vuzam hishat nael vod yevas mekan kam asel vod hodvatsa veda bedume bolorin bolorin tan katsat mart um tanel vira vodelen kam hai hoyelen kalore genal posti kanutsun yev nel kas nel vod ish nel vod alelen mod. Idea called Karas and Chors Gorsedit, Mot Yerku Hayude Nelkayat Sats Karakatsinere Data Volneri Masin, Pamvar Tevanyan, Duk Zer Hoskimech, Octa Gorsetsik, Mespisa Artai to love Gorset, good cases. Herapochutsun Seto, Hastanum, Chkan, love Gorset. Mincha Herapochutsun Yerelen, Ayo, love Gorset Gorset, Volonsitz Kadel, Pog Ashatel. 
կարելի էլ փող աշխատել այո։ Գործեր որտեղ կային կաղաքական տարբեր շահերի բախումներ։ Գործեր, որոնք պետք է մակագրվեին, պետք է ուղվեին շատ կոնքրետ դատավորների, որոնք գտնվում էին շատ կոնքրետ ազդեցության տակ։ Հեղափոխությունից հետո լավ ուվատ գործեր չկան, բոլոր գործերն էլ նույն կարևորություն իրավական տեսանկյունից ոչ հանրային վտանգավորության, բայց իրավական տեսանկյունից նույն կարևորություն ունեցող գործերն են։ Եվ ես նաև ուզում եմ հիշեցնել, որ գործող 244 տատավորների ճնշող մեծամասնությունը նշանակվել է կամ Հայաստան խմբակցության առաշնորդի իշխանության տարիներին կամ, պատիվ ունեմ խմբակցության առաշնորդի իշխանության տարիներին։ Միասին 20 տարի 1998-ից 2018 թվականներին։ Դուք հիմա եկել բողոքում եք, ասմ եք այկա մի դատավոր, որ մասնակցել է հեղափոխու� իրավաբաններ, իրավապաշպաններ, պաստաբաններ, այսիքն իրենց պետք է արգելվի, այս ու հետ զբաղեցնել պաշտոններ, որոնք պահանջում են դրսևորել կաղաքական չեզոքություն։ Վերջ, ով մասնակցել է հեղափոխությանը, � ձեր առաշնորդների նկատմամբ ու արտահայտում են այդ մասին, որինակ պարոն ազարյանը, ով աշխատել է ռոբերդ Քոչայանի աշխատակազմում իր իշխանության տարինդրին, ով հայտարարում էր կննելով ռոբերդ Քոչայանի իր պաշտոնից, թե գործից կհրաժարվի, երբ նիկոլ պաշինյանը հրաժարական կտա։ Մակուր կաղաքական հայտարություն, իր գործնեությունը կապել երկրի հեկավարի գործնեության հետ։ Վստահենք իր կննած գործին, վստահենք որպես լավ թե թեման բացեցիք, եկ եկ շատ բաց խոսենք, կաղնիք չի նաև թե ոնց են դատավորները նշանակվել, ընտրվել, եթե բոլոր դատավորները նշանակվել են շատ արդար, ազնիվ, պրոցեսի միջոցով, ապա դուք հիմա չպետի անհան Մեծ մասը նշանակված ձեր իշխանության տարիներին, եթե դուք ունեք նման անհանգստություն, նշանակում է այն ու ամենան իր եղել են հատուկ նշանակության գործերի համար նշանակված դատավորներ, ում էլ որ ժամանակին մակագրվել են գործերի մակագրման էլեկտրոնային համակարգը արգրավված է, այն հիմա չի գործում, արդենք լինի 8 ամիս, մինչ այդ գործել է երեկ տարվելիք են երեկ տարի, վաղը նորից կարող է սկսել գործել, ձրքով մակագրել է ինքնին, չի են թադիրում մեր դատարանների նախագահների բոլորը մեր որոք են նշանակվել, մենք ենք իրենց բերել, մեզ են իրենք են թարգվում, ոչ, ամենևին ոչ, այո, ձերքով մակագրվում են, սա մեկ, բացի այդ, հիմա դատավորները Հայաստանում ել հիմա իչխանովա ճիշտ ասել, որ գործը բակագրվեց այս կամ այն դատավորին։ Կարծում եմ, որ սխալ է, կախնիկ չի, կախնիկ չի, որ Հայաստանում արդահադատության համակարգը և դատական համակարգը ունի բարեպոխման կարիք։ Եվ մեն� 
ձգտում ենք բարեփոխել դատական համակարգը։ Ես չեմ ասի, որ այդ բարեփոխները գնում են իդեալական ձևով, բայց մենք անում ենք մեզանից կախված ամեն ինչ համակարգը բարեփոխելու համար։ Ավելի ու ավելի անաչար որև է ուսակցությունից անկախ դատարաններ ունենալու համար։ Բայց մենք նաև հասկանում ենք, որ հնարավոր չի Եվ ճիշտ էլ չի մի անգամից վերսնել ու զտել բոլոր դատավորներին, դա տեխնիկ ապես էլ հնարավոր չի, ու ձևավորել մի անգամից այդ ծավալի նոր դատարաններ։ Պատգամավորների ձերպակալման հետ կապված։ Ես ուզում եմ տեղակ պահել վել, հետո կալանավորվել են ընտրություններից առաջ հարուցված կրիական գործերով և ընտրությունից առաջ և նենք ենթարգվել են կրիական հետապնդման ընտրություններից առաջ։ Այո, դուք չիշտ ասեցիք, որ դուք դիտել է � մարդ է ընտրվելուց և ազգային ժողով մտնելուց հետո կալանավորվելու համար, պետք է ունենա ազգային ժողովի թուլթվությունը, դրա համար է մինակ աղզատ են արցակվել։ Ձեր իշխանության որոք, որև է սահմանադրական � դուք ունեցել եք պաշպանները այն ժամանակ դեղ այդ գործով, ես նաև ասեմ, որ բավոն Վարդևանյանը մինչև պատգամավոր լինելը հիշալ կրիական գործերի մի զգալի մասով տատական պաշպանն է եղել, ուղակի որպես տեղեկություն Ես երևի ավելորդ է նաև, որ չգիտեմ, բայց անադարնամ ամեն դեպքում արձենագրելու համար, ընտրությունների հետ կավված, ճանշումների հետ կավված, ինչ-որ գլուղ ճարդելու հետ կավված, բան մամիճանյան։ Ես չգիտեմ կարծես, թե ընտրություն էի ժամանակ, ընտրական պրոցեսում, որև է մեկի գլուղ չի ճարդվել, ի տարբերություն, ձեր ժամանակ կազմակ երվված ընտրություն էի, երվ ոչ թե գլուղներ էին ճարդվում, էլ մարդիկ էին սպանվում, չեմ � 2017 թվականին նախորդ, ես ուսում նասիրել եմ, խորութահանական գործ ընկերության կոմիտեի նախորդ առաջին հանդիպման արձենագրությունները, ելույթները, բրիվինգները, նախորդ կոմիտեի անդամները որինակ հայդի հաղտալան, որ տեղեկանալ, թե ինչ է կատարվել, նախորդ ընտրությունների ժամանակ, ինչ գնահատականներ են տրվել նախորդ ընտրությունների եվ հրապարակային, եվ ոչ հրապարակային, ինչ մաշտաբի ընտրակ աշարդներ են բաժանվել, ինչ աստիճանի հիմա են ընտրությունները ավելի արդար ու բաց ու թապանցիկ անցկասվում, թե առաջ։ Հիմա, որով հետև որև է մեկի մոտ կասկած չի առաջանում, ընտրությունից հետո ոչ ձեր մոտ։ Դուք որինա գիտեք, որ դուք ստացե� որ ուղիղ այդքան մարդ է ձեզ ձայն տվել, ոչ մի թերթիկ չի պակասել ա ձայների վրայից։ Բանով արդևանյաննել անգիր գիտի, 
որ իրենք ստացել են 280 քանի հազար ձայն ոչ մի թերթիկ չի պակասել ոչ մի քվեատուկ չի գողացվել ոչ մեկին ընտրատեղամասում չեն ծեցել ոչ մեկին մենք առնվազն չենք կաշառել իշխանությունը որ չի կաշառել որ այս ինչին ընտրի կամ այն ինչին ընտրի ոչ մեկ աշխատանքից չի ազատվել իր քաղաքական տեսակետը արտահայտելու համար համար եթե իհարկեն քո օրենքով պարտավորված չի պահպանել քաղաքական չեզոքություն եթե այդ պաշտոնների մասին չենք խոսում սա է իրողությունը շնորհակալություն ես ուղակի իմ պարտքը համարեցի կատարել այս արձանագրումները շնորհակալություն Well, thank you. And I can promise that I will be brief. Because usually everybody who says that they're going to be brief talk the longest. But I'd like to raise a couple of points. Uh, first of all, I, I do have to, I, I want to mention the positive side. And I want to mention the democracy index, which is a fact which is uh, developed by the Economist Intelligence Unit, and recently it showed Armenia as the leader of the region, even ahead of Georgia. With that, I want to say that I, I still keep to my words that Armenia is on the path of democratic reforms. Are there things that can be done better and more quickly? Yes. Is Armenia a perfect country? No. I don't know a perfect country in the world. There is room for improvement, and it has to be done. Now to some, some points that were raised by, I followed very closely this discussion. Honestly, I did not understand everything, especially when you started throwing the names, it became too complicated. But I followed, I think, the discussion in general terms. And I would like to reflect on some of the points you raised. On the elections. Uh, as, I also, as I also said in my introductory remarks, we were not able to participate in the elections as observers. EU just didn't, did not send observers due to the pandemic. But OSC ODIR was here. And we fully subscribe and support what OSC ODIR said. If I'm not mistaken, the elections were competitive and well managed. I agree. That's the mini minimum criteria. And my question is, is that enough for Armenia? Shouldn't Armenia strive at more transparency, more fairness of elections? So there is room and it has to be improved. Uh, then the question of uh, 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 independence and account accountability of justice. Uh, I think that it should be a top priority. And I also know that EU is paying attention to it and it uh, supports widely the bilateral cooperation, which re it reflects that this is always a priority for the EU. The, the reform should, should take place in the, in the form that it dispels all suspicions of political interference and selective justice. As long as these suspicions are there, they exist, they raise questions, and they raise many questions, even if the questions are well-founded. So the priority should be to have judiciary without political interference and selective justice, full stop. Uh, I'm aware of the need for reform. And the recent changes in the decision-making rules of the Supreme Judicial Council and the process of vetting of the judges raised some questions, agree with those who spoke. And I want to stress that it's important to continue with this reform. Constitutional reform. I raised this question also yesterday with Prime Minister and with uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. And the Prime Minister said that the work continues on that reform because the, what I stressed was the work has to be transparent and inclusive. Constitutions are not changed like that every Monday. 
It's a big legal process, so the whole society has to feel that they are being listened to, that they are being listened to very carefully, so that the process includes opposition, civil society, and the aim of the process is clear. What are we waiting for? I understand it's the better division of powers, but here I also agree that more clarity is needed. And better separation of powers is needed. Now, another law that we raised yesterday with Prime Minister is the law on the crime of grave insult. We had yesterday very thorough discussion at the dinner table. And uh, what I learned from that and also from uh, the discussions we had with Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister is open to learn from the best practices of the EU countries. Because we all have similar provisions in one form or another form in place together with definitions, so we go back home with the promise to share our best practices, and Prime Minister promised he will look into that. Uh, we are following also very closely the protection of minorities in Armenia. And when I say minorities, I mean uh, national minorities, but I also mean LGBTI community, I also mean gender, violence against women, and all these questions. So proud to say that we had yesterday a very good meeting with the civil society representatives, and these are questions that are close to my heart. These are questions that are important for every democratic state. These are questions that are important for the EU, so we'll continue following them. And of course, we we'll continue following the case of Mr. Shashik Sultanyan. I'd like to make, say it here very publicly and very openly. Thank you. And Marketa wants to speak. Please, Marketa yeah, thank you. Uh, I was slightly called out by the Brno mention, so I feel also obliged to react, even though, of course, it will be English. Uh, I do hope that we will understand each other. Um, well, my colleague, uh, Mrs. Kalyurant, already mentioned the defamation law uh, or grave insult law, but I would like to assure you that this point was raised with the Prime Minister yesterday. I met with some civil society organizations and have been debriefed uh, in a larger scale on the problems regarding that, and uh, that even with the upcoming media law, where I've heard there are prepared working groups, so hopefully this will be, uh, let's say, prepared in a better manner, uh, we will follow it very closely with the European Parliament, because this this is a very, uh, very dangerous uh, issue in terms of freedom of speech and censorship on social media. So uh, I'm hearing you and uh, this will be definitely followed uh, in the European Parliament. As uh, for uh, the mention of Bruno, just very briefly, I need to react that, uh, you know, as uh, Marina mentioned, uh, we don't know the cases, we don't know the names precisely, but thank you for pointing our attention to it. Uh, we will now uh, definitely follow it more closely. I just want to mention uh, also personally that if uh, the Brno mayor has been criminally prosecuted. I do hope that she wouldn't take her office uh, because, uh, you know, in politics, I personally believe that there should be uh, a presumption of guilt because it's a very, very serious uh, issue for a politician. Um, and last but not least, uh, this has not been an issue raised uh, today by you or it has actually not been an issue raised by anyone else than the civil society organizations that I've met. Uh, but I was made aware that uh, saying the term LGBT plus community in this building leads to death threats. And uh, therefore I am testing it now and uh, I do hope that this will improve uh, in Armenia and I wish that this improves because uh, we are all human beings. We are, uh, to be honest, just specks of dust flying through universe on a piece of rock and we should all realize this and to be more uh, tolerant towards each other. Thank you. Thank you. Dear colleagues, so we finished um, with uh, this point and I pass the floor for the next uh, topic of discussion to Ms. Kalivan, please. Uh, thank you. And I did not reflect on the question on the forum and the question of the uh, changing the co-chairs because uh, I, I will just pass them to the secretary. They know it much better, the questions that you raised at the beginning of your intervention. 
Uh, I was not talking about the co-chairs. We do have a position of the vice co-chairs. So I was suggesting that we would make it as a quota for the opposition, at least for the Armenian side. And Ms. Grigoreva, I do speak English, but I don't use it <laughs> in the building of the parliament of Armenia. So I understand that the secretariat can take care of that, and can look whether and how it should be. OK, thank you. It's just that uh, um, in, in practice, uh, I guess, there have never been elected vice chairs of the committee. So what Mr. Mamijanya suggests is something new. He suggests first to elect. So it's in our rule of procedure. I know, I know, but in practice. It, it hasn't ever been elected, and I yes. do suggest that so we So what elect. he suggests, to elect first, and to elect one of them from among opposition. We will discuss because, it and because it I'm does not, not against. concern European Parliament. Yeah. So that's why I'm not please against discuss so and please decide how yes. you want and yes. we will adopt it in the rules yeah. of procedure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And with that we can move to the next point of the agenda. It's point number seven Nagorno Karabakh conflict and uh, regional security developments. Uh, I've spoken so much about that in the recent days. But maybe I have not underlined enough the regret for the loss of lives on both sides. Because in the end, it was war and people died. People are still in detention. I strongly condemn use of force in any form. And that's why I mentioned also in my uh, first remarks the war that broke out in a very violent form today at night. But still also at this table and now, I would like to reiterate the, that the Azerbaijani narrative of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict being solved is not accepted by the European Parliament, is not accepted by the EU institutions, once again, I can refer to the discussion we had our, at, our at our plenary last week when we adopted the report and resolution on common security and foreign policy. So we see the only way in uh, negotiations, political neg negotiations, in negotiating a peace treaty, in the presence by, by the international community, represented by the Minsk Group co-chairs. So no other, uh, no other possibilities on the table. Uh, as you also know, the European Parliament and uh, me in the capacity of the chair of the South Caucasus, I have raised several times and I continue raising the question of prisoners of war, persons arrested, and Armenian persons in, kept in Azerbaijan. Uh, also, I would like to say that we do not, I do not think, and we do not, European Parliament does not think it's right to use humans as bargaining chips. And I think the solution how Armenia did, giving out all the maps, was the right solution to do. You do not trade people against maps or anything else. So we will be raising the question of prisoners of war, persons arrested and detained, as long as the last Armenian citizen returns to Armenia. And as to, the, uh, as to the maps that were provided to the Azerbaijani side, I'm also happy to say that the uh, EU is ready to give any technical assistance, which Ambassador also discussed yesterday with Minister for Foreign Affairs. Uh, I'm also aware of the difficult situation of the local population along the border and of the need to make sure they can live normal lives and to exercise all their rights, free, free from fear for their safety and property, without roadblocks on their way to work or to their families. Now, on the important, uh, as to the unblocking of regional communications, this is a very positive element of the ceasefire agreement. 
and it would be of great benefit to the whole region. And I understand that press centered now. Press would like to listen to this point. They didn't want to listen to the previous point. No, 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 no. They are just taking the video shots okay. for the news. It's, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, it's just a coincidence, nothing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as I also said before, I listened very carefully to the, to the statements by the Armenian delegation at the Euronest, and I think the approach of pragmatic small steps is important and is a way forward in finding small solutions in, in growing respect, finding more um, uh, ways of cooperation between the sides. I hope that agreement on the road connection can also be reached soon, with full respect of the Armenia sovereignty over the entire Syrian region. Here again, the EU has the tools to provide support, just as it already, just as it is already doing for the strategically important Armenian North-South corridor. Connectivity is a priority given its huge benefits in terms of economic, economic, economy, but also people-to-people -people contacts. I wish to stress that in the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, reconciliation must be the ultimate long-term goal. This is a process that needs efforts from both sides. It means acknowledging that your own side is also responsible and bears responsibility. It means trying to understand the position of other side. There are also landmines that have killed several dozens of uh, Azerbaijanis since November 2020 and injured many more, mostly civilians, while it is perceived in Azerbaijan that Armenia withheld information it had about the location of mines. At the same time, these are not excuses for some of the actions of Baku over the recent months that we have also publicly criticized. But I think it's important to raise these issues also here in Yerevan. I have been critical towards the Baku military trophy park. It is good to know that some of the, some of the sculptures have been removed, so steps have been taken by Azerbaijani side. I have noted that the International Court of Justice ordered last December that Azerbaijan must end incitement to hatred, and I'm quoting, by its officials and public institutions. It did, however, also order Armenia to end such incitement, even if not referring to the state, but to, I quote, organizations and private persons in its territory. I would, would like to reiterate what I have said on numerous times also before. A lot more restraint is needed on both sides. Cultural heritage is an important issue and has to be followed very closely. I very much share the concern of Armenian monuments in the territories handed over to Azerbaijan. And needless to say, I was shocked when just a couple of weeks ago, the Minister of Culture of Azerbaijan announced plans to systematically remove Armenian inscriptions from religious sites, calling them, and I quote, Armenian forgery. I strongly condemn this. After more than a year of negotiations, UNESCO mission has not been able to, re to visit the region. I'm raising it with the Azerbaijani side whenever I have contacts with them. And there is no justification for Baku not to give access to UNESCO. Azerbaijan rightly points to the extensive destruction in these areas. But if it claims Azerbaijani heritage was deliberately destroyed, this is one more reason to let the UNESCO go and see situation on the ground. And to conclude, I would like to welcome the recent developments 
and the recent negotiations between Armenia and Turkey. I know that the delegation today is in Vienna meeting. I wish them all the best, all success. And now I would like to open the floor for remarks, questions, comments. And first, I give floor to my co-chair, Mr. Yakoyan. Arman, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Ms. Kalurand. Uh, I will start uh, my uh, remarks with a very uh, uh, small uh, correction on the Azerbaijani cultural heritage and uh, questions related to it. So whichever units of Azerbaijani cultural heritage were destroyed in 90s, they were destroyed due to the war, due to the fights, due to the um, military operations. After the war, no any Azerbaijani culture, I mean, units of Bidat Cemetery, graves, mosques, etc., was not destroyed because of their cultural belonging. On the contrary, some of them were uh, reconstructed by state money, some of them. Some mosques were reconstructed by state money. So this is 100% false. We never intended to eliminate the presence of any culture on any territory. You can find uh, the traces of uh, Islamic culture in Armenia, traces of, uh, we, are on, we live on the cr crossroads of civilizations. We have seen many guests here, Arabs, uh, Arabic conquest, and uh, Mongols, uh, but we have never erased any trace of uh, their culture in our homeland. Uh, I very much share your uh, points uh, and I applaud them on, the, on your assessment of um, the status and the attitude of Azerbaijan towards uh, Armenian captives and hostages and detainees. And I also condemn this policy of bargaining, using people for political goals. This is completely unacceptable, and I uh, welcome the strong stance of uh, your personal stance and that of the uh, European uh, Parliament. And I will want to mention that uh, it is indeed practically very important to say it uh, constantly, because it affects policy makers and decision makers. The view of the European Parliament is very important for actors in our region, and uh, I encourage you, if I may say, to uh, continue um, in this way. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Well, thank you, Arman. If you listened carefully to me, and I hope you did, I did not say that I claimed that. I said that if Azerbaijanis claim that there is destruction of cultural sites by the Armenian side, then it is even more in their interests to let UNESCO go to the region. So I hope you got it right. It wasn't yeah. my claim. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and... Uh, I responded I to their claim. <laughs> and uh, now let's continue with the speakers, and Mr. Momijanian, please, you have the floor. Yes, Benakanabar, Chem, Shekert, Lenimech, Kehtoti, Ice, Teman, Nerkak, Kanzer, Utsishar, Nakutam, but Uzman Vastai, Snell, Mergorz, and Kernerin were in chat bowlers. Մեկնաբանություններին պարոն Եղբայանի կողմից հարկային հակադարձումներ եւ փաստական հակադարձումներ եւ ես կընդունեմ Տիկին Գրեգորևայի ելույթը որպես առաջարկ եւ տվյալներով եւ փաստային տվյալներով փորձեմ ապահովել մեր գործ ընկերներին Եվրոպ Պարլամենտից։ Իսկ արժեք մարդ, այնադառնում խնդրել արարկային։ 
Ես եւս մեկ անգամ շնորհակալեմ մեր գործընկերներին իրենց արդարացի եւ ազնիվ դիրքորոշումների համար։ Դիկին Կալորանդը մեր երկրի, մեր երկրների, մեր ժողովրդի կողքին էր այն ժամանակ, երբ մենք դրա կարիքը ունենք ամենաշատ։ Եվ խնդրում եմ ընկալել, որ այն խոսքերը, որը ես կասեմ հիմա, բաց հարապես չի վերաբերվում դահլիճում ներկա Եվրոպ պարլամենտի պատգամավորներին, այլ վերաբերվում է նրանց, ովքեր լուր էին 44 օրյա պատերազմի ընթացքում։ Ուստի խնդրում եմ որևէ կերպ անձնապես ասածներս չնկալել, ձեր պարագայում գործում է ճիշտ հակառակ տրամաբանություն։ 2020 թվականին աշխարհը եւ մասնավորապես Եվրոպան Արցախն ու Հայաստանը միայնակ են թողել թուրքական տանդեմի դեմ։ Վստահ եմ, որ գիտեք, որ գոյություն ունի ճարտված պատուհանների տեսություն կոչված թեզը, Broken Window Theory։ Այն նշում է, որ եթե տան շինության պատուհաններից որևէ մեկը ճարտված լինի եւ մնա այդպես, տեվական ժամանակ չփոխարինվի, ապա շատ կարճ ժամանակ անց շինության բոլոր պատուհանները կջարդվեն։ Սա օգտագործվել էր, եթե չեմ սխալում, ամերիկյան քաղաքներից որը մեկ մեկում ոչ ծանր հանցագործությունների հետ կապած կապը ցույց տալու ծանր հանցագործությունների հետ։ Երբ սահմանային լարվածության հրահրումը, երբ սահմանային միջադեպերը չեն ստանում հասցեական նկատողություն միջազգային հանրության կողմից իսկ գործող իշխանությունների ապիկար արտակին քաղաքական հետևանքով կորսվեցին Վիեննայի եւ Սանկտ Պետերբուրգի պայմանավորվածությունները եւ մեկնարարություն չունեցանք նաեւ մոնիտորինգային լծակներ ունենալու սահմանում լարվածության բարձրացման եւ միջադեպերի նկատմամբ շատ հաճախ աշխարհը լուր էր եւ լուր էր եւ կոչ էր անում անհասցե։ Երբ ռազմատային չհայտարարություններ եւ արտահայտություններ էին արվում Ադրբեջանի ամենատարբեր մակարդակների պաշտոնյաների կողմից, աշխարհը նույնպես լուր էր։ Երբ պատերազմի օրերին կիրառվում էին ֆոնսֆորային ռումբեր, երբ պատերազմում ներգրավված էին վարձկան զինյալներ, տերորիստներ եւ խնդրում եմ ուշադրություն դարձնալ, որ սա հայկական հատուկ ծառայությունների բացահայտումները չեն, սրանք միջազգային մի շարք թե եվրոպական, թե ոչ միայն եվրոպական երկրների հատուկ ծառայությունների փաստագրումներն են։ Աշխարհը նորից կարծես լուր էր։ Աշխարհը հիմնել է լուր գերեների խնդրի հերաբերյալ, լուր է շակույթային արժեքների ոչնչացման հարցերում նորից եմ նշում, որ խոսքը չի վերաբերվում այստեղ նստած մարդկանց, խոսքը վերաբերվում է այն կառույցներին, որոնք այս պահին դրա մասին չեն խոսում։ Բայց ես ուզում եմ ձեր ուշադրությունը գրավել մի երկու միջատեպի վրա, որոնց մասին այդքան էլ շատ չի խոսվում։ Առաջին ես ուզում եմ ձեր ուշադրությունը հրավիրել նրա վրա, որ Ադրբեջանական կողմը ենթարկվելով իր այդ սեփական հորինած ցնորքին, որ Ղարաբաղյան հիմնախնդիր է լուծվել է, հաշվի չառնելով համանախագահների հինգ հայտարարությունները, որ խնդիրը չի կարող ունենալ ռազմական լուծում եւ այլն, հանդգնություն է ունենում Հայաստանի Հանրապետության ազգային ժողովի կրթության, գիտության, անձնաժողովի պատգամավորների այցելության պատճառով Արցախ հայտարարել որ չեղարկելու է Մինսկի խմբի շրջանակներում տեղի ունեցող ագ նախարարների հանդիպումը եւ հստակորեն հայտարարում է որ պատճառը դա է ուզում եմ նաեւ ձեր ուշադրությունը հրավիրել ադրբեջանի նախագահի եթե չեմ սխալում մոտ 1 ամիս առաջ առաջ հայտարարությունը հարցին թե ինք արդյոք ինչով է զբաղվում Մինսկի խումբը ինչով ինչով են զբաղվելու Մինսկի խմբի համանախագահները նա լկտիություն ունեցավ պատասխանելու դե հավանաբար պատրաստվելու են իրենց հոբելյանին այս տարի 30 ամյակն է 
նմանօրինակ ռետորիկան կարող է ստեղծել շատ եւ արդեն իսկ ստեղծել է շատ վտանգավոր անպատժելիության նախադեպ կարծում եմ որ հարևան երկրի բռնապետը արդեն շատ է բաց հարցակ հաշվի չառնում միջազգային հանրության կարծիք եւ կարծում եմ որ միջազգային հանրության արձագանքը պիտի լինի բարձր եւ հստակ նաեւ ելույթս ավարտելուց ուզենամ մի առաջար կանել առավել եւս որ դրա փորձառությունը արկա է ամենատարբեր կոնֆլիկտների եւ ամենատարբեր երկրների պարագայում կոչ եմ անում որպես եվրոպական միություն եւ եվրոպարլամենտը որպես ինստիտուցիոնալ կառույց ստեղծեն ժամանակավոր հանձնաժողով պատերազմի ժամանակ եւ դրանից հետո տեղի ունեցած վայրագությունների մարդու իրավունքների խախտումների մարդկության դեմ գործած ոչիրների բացահայտման կամ գոնե առնվազն փաստահավաք աշխատանքի համար եթե նույն իսկ մենք չհասնենք նրան որ ստանանք հասցեական եզրակացություններ ապա նույն իսկ հաստահավակ աշխատանքը եվրոպարլամենտի կողմից խիստ արդյունավետ կլինի statements that you and your colleagues made regarding Artsakh regarding the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict of course the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has not been resolved despite the one-sided statements from Azerbaijan the widely recognized and accepted by the international community the core principles the cornerstone of which is the principle of self-determination and non-use of force were blatantly violated by Azerbaijan's and Turkey's political leadership and military forces during the 44 days of war these actions would not be possible if the international community if our European colleagues not only broke their silence but also were active our brothers and sisters were covered in blood their hopes for peace were shattered the values in which in which they believed were destroyed by the strikes of Turkish Bayraktars and prohibited weaponry I believe we have a consensus that it is difficult to believe in humanity or humanitarian law when schools, hospitals, even churches were bombarded while the international community was enjoying the inaction. Blood and darkness became the reality that citizens of Artsakh and Armenia endured for 44 days. Let us not forget the roots of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, the systemic policy of hatred, discrimination towards all Armenians, including those living in Artsakh, and mass human rights violations. In February 1988, Azerbaijani-sponsored and organized mobs killed raped and even burned alive ethnic Armenians living in Sumgait, which is the second largest city currently in Azerbaijan. These actions happened in other cities as well. The international legal consequence of such actions was the declaration of independence of Artsakh on September 2, 1991. And this is one of the examples or chances to congratulate Madame Galurand regarding the Independence Day of Estonia. Because nations have the right to self-determination and to independence. The consequence of the state policy of ethnic cleansing was exercised again on February 19, 2004. People do not remember this incident, but I hope to use this opportunity. In 2004, a sleeping soldier of Armenia, Gurgen Markaryan, was viciously killed with an axe by the soldier of the Azerbaijani forces, Ramil Safar. You know what happened by the country 
which is a member of the Council of Europe, which is trying to have a partnership with the European Union. I'm talking about Azerbaijan. Not only did they reward Ramil Safarov's actions, they pardoned him while he was sentenced to life imprisonment. The stated situation and examples which were brought clearly stipulate the grounds for external self-determination, which were well established by the international community, including the International Court of Justice. The 44-day war initiated by Azerbaijan, whose leader just days ago proudly stated that it was his decision to violate the principle of non-use of force, is another fact that the people of Artsakh can never be safe surrounded by the people of Azerbaijan. It is no coincidence that the same tactics which were used in Sumgait back in 1988 were used again in the 21st century during the war. Not only the basic principles of international humanitarian law were viciously violated, but also the cultural heritage of Armenians were targeted, harmed or destroyed, and this continues up until now. We hope that the international community, our other colleagues from Europe, noticed that even after the ceasefire, Azri forces violated the agreement numerous times. They even went further, continuously violated the territorial integrity of Armenia, which is still in place as of now, refused to immediately release POWs and other detainees. Even now as we speak, our brothers are being tortured in the penitentiary institutions of Azerbaijan and Azeri forces are standing inside our country. We have noticed the important statements made by our European colleagues, including the most recent COE Parliamentary Assembly's report. Your statements, Madam Kalurand, are of paramount importance regarding the situation in Artsakh. But I want to stress what the Armenian public, what the people in Artsakh have not seen. In Kosovo, years ago, Europe was not only merely making statements, condoning actions, but they were also acting. Europe was talking with the language of sanctions, of international responsibility tools, while in this case, Europe is only making statements. What is the reason behind these differences? What is the reason instead of sanctions, we see the support of a typical example of dictatorship regime in Azerbaijan by even providing billions of euros to that dictatorship regime, to the country which literally abused anything possible in regards to international humanitarian law. Thousands of my brothers and sisters died in order to prove that the Republic of Artsakh the struggle of a nation cannot be ignored. Self-determination cannot be ignored. Justice cannot be ignored. This situation reminds me the famous quote from the Bible. Am I my brother's keeper? In response to this question, which was the equivalent of inaction, God did not give an answer. God gave a punishment because actions have to have consequences. These actions, these continuous crimes by Azerbaijan need to have a punishment. I've heard the statement that efforts have to be from both sides. What kind of efforts are we talking when, as of now, as I've said, our brothers are being tortured in Azerbaijan penitentiary institutions. And this has been going on from 2020, November 9. Why are we not talking about sanctions about these actions, which at least should require sanctions? Why are we not even talking about the threat of sanctions? How is this possible, by the way? The European Union is vested with all the necessary tools to ensure that the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict settlement process 
be immediately resumed on the basis of existing core principles, especially self-determination, within the merits of the mandate of the co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group, including the deoccupation de of the territories of Artsakh and the return of the Armenians of Artsakh to their places of residence. The Republic of Artsakh is wounded, but has a statehood and its rightful independence. And a just quick example of what happened after the Euronest meeting. I hope it's really quick. Yes, it is. Madam Kalirand, when you were saying about the last meeting in Armenia during the Euronest format, two Azerbaijani representatives were in Armenia. They visited a church in Armenia, in the center of Yerevan. You know what they did in the sense, in, in the mosque, excuse me. You know what they did in the sense of efforts from both sides. They posted a picture of the mosque. They said that it's in Yerevan and the historical owners of Yerevan will one day return here. And we are talking about efforts from both sides. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vardavan, for your, for your remarks. I also didn't interrupt you, although you spoke for 16 minutes. So I would really ask colleagues to be precise and short in your remarks, because one of the things that I learned in the European Parliament is there is no message you can't deliver in three minutes, then it's not important. Uh, having said that, Mrs. Gasparian, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would also join my colleagues and congratulate you on the Independence Day of Estonia. I would like also to congratulate uh, you on a very comprehensive um, speech where you touched upon various issues of great importance to us. Uh, as for your first speech, there you just emphasize how fragile peace and democracy can be. Uh, as for democracy frag fragility, I will not uh, speak about uh, domestic political issues, as uh, I think a lot of things have already been discussed, but I have just one suggestion to uh, my colleagues of opposition. Uh, dear colleagues, you have nothing but to admit that democracy installation is already a reality in Armenia. And I suggest that you take certain steps in solving the political polarization and at least not hinder and encourage the development and improvement of the institutions and our young democracy. As for uh, the peace fragility, of course my colleagues have just spoken about uh, a lot of things, but I'll also just, I would also like to comment on certain uh, important issues. Uh, so, the foreign policy of Azerbaijan is totally based on lies, manipulations, distortions of the truth, and various misleading techniques. Now, I'll just set two examples proving my words. During U the Uranus Joint Committee meeting held in Yerevan, one of the members of Parliament of Azerbaijan falsely declared that they have returned all Armenian prisoners of war and other detainees. Dear European colleagues, it's a total lie. There are several dozens of Armenians, um, of Armenian prisoners of war and other detainees kept in Azerbaijan, and also a lot of others are suspected to be there. Those suspicions are not just assumptions. They are based on various evidences, though Azerbaijan goes on not confirming these cases. Uh, of course, Mr. Vartevanyan has just mentioned about the second case, but I would also like to speak about that. Uh, so the other member of parliament of Azerbaijan yesterday shared a photo of him and his uh, colleague taken in front of the Persian Blue Mosque in Yerevan. He wrote, that it is the only Azerbaijani monument preserved in Yerevan. He then added that it is 
um, that its true owners will be able to offer their prayers in the mosque. What is it if not an indirect threat to cultural heritage, to peace and territorial integrity as well? Naturally, shortly after that, the Iranian embassy to Armenia denied that false information, stating that this mosque is undeniably a Persian cultural heritage. Hence, it can be just stated that Azerbaijan continues to be a consequent threat to permanent peace in the whole region, to the historical and cultural heritage, and to essential human rights. And if no steps are taken in this regard, it can become a precedent of non-implementation of internationally accepted documents and agreements, and also non-peaceful ways of conflict resolutions. However, we are hopeful that in the end, our efforts will be paid off and we will manage to maintain permanent peace and security in our region. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Kasparian, thank you so much for your remarks. Dear colleagues, I'm looking around. If anyone, anyone wants to share their thoughts or remarks, now is the last time. I do not see. With that, we have concluded our agenda point number seven, and we are going to the final agenda point, which is any other business. I do not have information that anybody wants to speak on to that point, but if somebody wants, please let me know. Do not see that. Uh, it means that we have approached the end of the meeting. I would like once again to thank everybody who spoke and for the concluding remarks. Happy to give floor to Mr. Yegayan. Arman, please, you have the floor. <clears throat> thank you very much, Ms. Kalurand, for what you have said, for what you have done, for your positive attitude, uh, for your optimism in all situations. I am um, very happy and honored to host you uh, in Armenia. We had uh, first, we had Euronest meetings. You as a uh, member of the delegation were present and uh, Ms. Gregorova. Then we continued with the PPC meetings. I think that uh, these days were uh, very fruitful both for multilateral and um, uh, bilateral uh, relations for mates. Um, I would suggest to continue in this manner and even more deepen and strengthen and enrich our uh, relations. Thank you very much. And uh, with this, I close the second meeting of the parliamentary EU Armenia Parliamentary Partnership Committee. Thank you, dear guests. I also would like to say, uh, I forgot to mention that me and Ms. Kalurand, we will issue a joint statement on, our, on, on, the, on behalf of co-chairs of uh, PPC. You all uh, are aware uh, of, the, of its content, informed, uh, and will be issued today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. With that, I would like to thank you for their Armenian hospitality. I can say that it has improved a lot even in 40 years. So on behalf of all of our colleagues, uh, and thank you for the open and frank discussions. So next time we will meet next year in Brussels or Strasbourg, and we hope to answer to your hospitality with that of French and Belgian. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.